body body work your body body work your body body girl i wanna work your body body work your body body work your body body yeah Alright, so this is Eras and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel once again. So, so far we have covered how to produce baby scratches. Um, yeah, and an in-depth on how to produce a bit of some few patterns. Now today I'll be walking you through how to create a stub scratch. For those that don't know stab scratch, stab scratch is mainly, it has been seen or used by people that use controllers, that is when a person pushes the platter, I mean cuts the sound, producing a sharp and quick sound. So they do this by either cutting sound while pushing the platter in front. In virtual DJ you can do this by using forward scratch and then using the Q button that means you produce the forward so I mean the yeah the forward movement scratch and then cut the sound in this case we don't cut the sound actually for us we just go back to the beginning so this is how it would sound in virtual DJ now there will be you will get different sound for the type of scratch you're using it's the same as the controller in the controller if you push it forward very fast to produce a sharper sound than when you push it slower so in this case virtual dj our case is different we make sure either we are using a longer scratch or a shorter that is the 60 ms or 120 ms or 240 ms so you would have something of the sort then this is a different one no actually that's the same i'm using 60 on 2 then there's that also that is around 120 so it's about preference now let's begin the configuration bit of this so for configuration we shall require so let's start with this for my case i used one then i used x then the usual C for the Q. So this is the forward scratch, then go back to Q1, then play. So how to set that up, go to configuration as usual. Then, uh, now for those who went through the scratch tutorials, we have the back scratch and then the forward scratch. So you'd have maybe Z and X, Z4, back scratch, X4, forward scratch. Then you'd have, so this would be, I think you all know how to set up the scratching bit of this. So then you'd have the Q next to, as covered in the previous tutorials. Now the only difference is, what we didn't talk about was the 1. So my 1, in most cases 1 would be looping, as per default virtual DJ. But I switched my 1 to go to Q. Meaning, no matter what I do, after I've done that, whenever I press 1, I'll be sent back to Q.1. So even if I moved a number of times using the scratch button, and I clicked 1, I'll be brought back to Q1. That enables me to play without... Because if I moved and tried to play, it would try to create a Q somewhere else. So that means I would have to return. No matter what I did, I would have to return to q1 to play it so that is what simplifies that so when you scratch go back to one play forward scratch go back to one play so you keep doing this until it becomes simpler to you it becomes more of a routine so as you can see forward scratch forward scratch go back play forward scratch go back play now there's, uh, there are settings where you can do all this in just one button but the difference is if you did that in one button using maybe because you can add all this up but your DJ allows you to do this you can say scratch then you say and 
something of the sort scratch then after that go back to q1 virtual dj will do that for you just have to press one button and does the rest but the difference is you will not be able to produce the kinds of patterns you want because it will be the same the same sound but in this case you can actually use it to create your own beats so you can create a difference here so just by doing this so another way to make this simpler for you it will be like you're scratching but instead of using the back scratch this time use the one instead of going back scratch just use it to go back to q1 then you can play So that is how you can produce the stub scratch uh, a lot of you have been requesting for how to do this well we shall i will have to create a clearer tutorial on that that enables you to understand this concept because it also takes a little bit of Oh, no, it's not, it's not that complex, but it takes a little bit of practice. Same as this. So for now, I would like us at least to first get the hang of this. Because most people will do this, then forget to go back to Q1. And they will end up missing the beat. So let me give an example of playing this live. This is how, this is how it will come to play. Then we can also use it. The 60. To depend on how you want it to sound, you can decide to also change it to 240. Let's see what will happen if we use the 240. So I'll change since I'm only using the forward scratch for now. Let me do 240 and see how that would sound. So this would be two forty does not sound that good, so I'll go back to my one twenty. So surprisingly you change to some songs and you'd find the two twenty sounding way better than the one twenty. I mean the two forty sounding far better than the I want the 120 and the 60 so it just depends on the song you are playing so for now that is it for the stab scratch so now what I'm doing is I'm adding it to you can actually add it into the baby scratches as long as you come back to the wavy on the baby scratches plus the start scratch. You can see sometimes it fail to come up to the Q1, and that's why it fails to play. So you have to make sure no matter what you do, you come back to this. So that is it for the stab scratch. I hope you enjoy this. And for those that have not subscribed, please remember to subscribe. We have a lot more tutorials coming your way. Uh, for those that requested for the back spin scratch, I'll be working on that in the shortest time possible. Thank you for viewing.